My name is Sahar, and I'm just a weirdo neighborhood mermaid. I'm a foodie with a focus in handwork and animation, studying for a master's in design in Thessaloniki, Greece. Enjoy the escapades of a lost American making art and trying to eat their way through Greece and beyond. Let's go! Iceland! Iceland! Land of ice and fire and food, and especially big foods. This trip was amazing. <laughs> Despite bad weather and no northern lights, <laughs> this was a stupendous trip. Such awesome sights in nature and some tasty food in unexpected locations. We started off the trip by flying into Kathlak Airport and picked up our car and went directly to the Blue Lagoon, but the light had already kind of just gone. So while we didn't really get to see the blue, it was still really great. If you go at night, it's less crowded, it feels a little more relaxed, like you're privately wandering around the lagoon instead of, you know, staring in broad daylight at everyone else that's just like you, a basic tourist. I already know what I am. I like the little fantasy I could have in the nighttime. Our first full day of our self-drive tour was supposed to be at Snaefells National Park, but the weather was so bad and Kirkuyofels Foss was closed for the winter that we stayed in Reykjavik for the day and went to the National Museum. I ate an amazing vanilla roll, still thinking about it, and some excellent fish and chips. Nice. On our way to Snorkel and Sulfa. Here we are. Pingvala National Park. It is squeaky snow, very cold. And we're gonna snorkel in about an hour. Basically, there's the continental drift that's occurring from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where the Eurasian tectonic plate and the North American plate are just like pulling apart. And so we technically snorkeled between two continental plates and it's like a no man's land. And it was cold, beautiful, potable, delicious, clear aquifer fed water from a glacier like 50 kilometers away. It was amazing. We had a really great guide. Her name was Andrea from Total Expeditions. She took a lot of photos of our small group. And then after drinking hot chocolate and candy, because very cold, we tried to take a look at Gulfoss, but we had just missed the light. So it wasn't quite as visible as I had hoped, but it was still really beautiful, but it was also very cold and windy. So we didn't stay out there for very long. Dinner was at the Crisp restaurant in Selfoss and I had a delicious vegan burger. House made lentil patties, chef's kiss, amazing. Again, still thinking about that food. At the guest house, there was a friendly dog named Nala who greeted us at the accommodations. And the next day with her friend Freya, they were romping around us while we went and said hi to some Icelandic horses across from the guest house. Icelandic horses are a very specific breed to Iceland, obviously, and they're a little short and stockier. And anyway, they were just really cute. We liked it a lot. On the third day, you know, the Icelandic horses are everywhere and you can see them from the side of the road, much like you can see cows on the side of the road in the Midwest. And much like when you see cows, I would go horses as we pass them. <laughs> from there, I decided to grab some gas station food to enjoy on the road and just to try what Icelandic gas station food is basically like. All right, so we got... I don't think I'll actually like this, but yeah. Sugar-free carbonated drink with marine collagen, caffeine, vitamins, and sweetener. And I grabbed the Hindervira Apropur soup, which is raspberry apricot. It smells good. <laughs> it tastes exactly like a uh, raspberry flavored children's medicine. I mean, I'm not mad at it, it's just that's the impression I get when I have it. I'm gonna try my smoked salmon egg salad, poppy seed bun, hoagie looking thing. I like it. We got a lot of rain now. From there, we swung by Selendiafoss on our way to Glacier Hike on Solheimjokul. 
<laughs> and I gotta tell you, that hike was amazing. We lucked out that we had a gap in the rain for most of the day for like 10 minutes at the beginning of the hike. And so we got to see like a full rainbow, just shining golden ah, moment. So amazing. It was actually technically kind of a dangerous hike. Like you could easily get hurt, but it was a really amazing one. We had a great guide. His name was Bartok from Poland, another shout out. And it was just an amazing hike. I clearly was odd, as you can see. <laughs> from there, we drove to our lodging in Vic near the Renisfera beach and went to bed. Fourth day was Renesfiara Beach. So Renesfiara is awesome, as in like dictionary definition, awe-inspiring. The black sand, the basalt columns, the waves. Okay, so there were danger notices on safety apps for extra powerful, high, dangerous waves at Renesfiara Beach while we were there. So our feet did get wet. but we like didn't try to wade into the water like dum-dums. I also <laughs> decided to get very cold and I tried to take a fancy photo in an orange getup. Uh, lasted like two minutes. <laughs> my feet lost feeling. And so I had to put my hot hands into my boots so I could feel them again. From there, we grabbed some dessert and snacks from the Black Beach restaurant in the parking lot. And I gotta tell you, I was not expecting that restaurant to have such good food. I thought I'd like to be overpaid so much. That scare cake is a thing of beauty. I loved it so much that on the way back to Reykjavik a few days later, we stopped to get another slice. <laughs> From there, we swung by Yokosal and Glacier Lagoon for the end of the sunset on our way into Hoffen, which is gonna be like our last accommodations, also the furthest east of the island that we went. And I'm really glad that we did because the next day the weather was just so bad, you could hardly see anything at the lagoon. Dinner was a linguistine roll at the Hoffner Buden Cafe. And we also just got some like ice cream desserts. I wouldn't say they're particularly like Icelandic known, but they were nice desserts. On the fifth day, we had an early morning and I tried a traditional continental Icelandic breakfast. I ate creamed caviar and it's like egg roe mixed with mashed potatoes and it's sold in these aluminum tubes and so it looks like toothpaste. But you have that with egg on toast and I enjoyed it. And from there we headed to the ice cave tour at Mount Nyoko Glacier and it was amazing. Truly, like I was at a loss for words and just kept walking around being like Owen Wilson being like, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. Truly, the blue of the cave, the reflections, the light, you can see from my photos how much I just loved it. And it just, it seemed like another world. Truly, if you get the chance, go do that. But you can only do it in the winter. There are a few things like glacier hiking and um, ice caves that you can only do in the winter because they're melting so fast that during the warmer months, they're too unstable for people to safely go check them out. At the end of the tour, we decided to get food from the food truck in the parking lot to like tide us over until we got back to Reykjavik later that day. And we went for the vegan lentil bratwurst and another linguistine roll and we were splitting them. And I gotta tell you, again, unexpected because it's just a food truck at a tourist spot in Iceland, but so amazing that we had to talk ourselves out of buying a third roll. From there, the weather really got windy, so we decided to drive back towards Reykjavik, stopping at Rinnesfjara again to take another look at those crashing waves, get soaked, and have some more skier cake. We just missed the light and were fully drenched, but we also took a quick look at Skogafoss. On the sixth day, we signed up very last minute for the Icelandic horseback riding. After meeting the horses across from the guest house back in Selfoss, we just really kind of wanted to go for a ride on them because they're so different and they have like their own specific word. It's between a trot and like a faster paced walk and it's like doesn't exist anywhere else but because of the gate from the Icelandic horses, they have it and so we got to try it and at the end, there were waffles. We rode over the lava fields. My horse was also very food motivated, just like me. And look at this sassy side eye. And then we ended the evening at Pizza Reykjavik, very tasty. I had a very sauce heavy but delicious vegan pizza. And then we did Nom Nom Chocolate and Ice Cream Shop. 
which was also very good, and I got chocolate from there as gifts for my roommates, and it was real good, and there were these like sea salt caramel malt balls that I crunched on forever, and they were so good. We wrapped up our trip that night. GM had a really early flight the next morning, and I had an extra day in Reykjavik before I'd be flying back to Greece. And so on my extra day, I wandered around Reykjavik a bit, Eat some traditional Icelandic food and schnapps for dinner at Cafe Loki, which is by the picturesque cathedral Hallgrimskirke. Kirke? Sorry about that pronunciation, Iceland. But my main and favorite thing was Baka Baka. It's an Icelandic run bakery by day, restaurant by night. I bought several cardamom rolls and an Iceland donut called a Kleiner. And I went back for breakfast before leaving for the airport. My free day, I briefly got to meet the head baker, Ari. And I was going to go back to interview him before I left for the airport the following day for breakfast. But unfortunately, he was sick that morning. <laughs> so a bit of a sad moment, but I sat at the airport eating my baked goods and looking at my Icelandic drinks I grabbed. They are a variety of schnapps, including a birch flavored one, crowberry, and basically from there, I started the long trip home and crashed from exhaustion. Thanks for joining me on my dream trip to Iceland.